We're going to discuss the uh, scanning protocol of the wrist and the hand. This is ask the patient to slowly uh, flex their thumb back and forth, not the other four digits, but just the thumb only, and that will activate the flexor pollicis longus. And when, you do, when they do that, you can see the activation of the tendon here. And typically what you'll need to do to get yourself uh, in the area of visualizing the median nerve is to go to the top of the image and towards uh, the uh, um, ulnar aspect. This is the radial margin here, and that'll take you to the very, very superficial median nerve. And that's another thing that people don't really um, keep in mind or they're not aware of, uh, especially doctors that are injecting into the carpal tunnel on a routine basis when I show them this image. Uh, they're kind of surprised at how superficial the median nerve is. Uh, we're going to start off in short axis orientation. This is her right shoulder. So that means in short axis, the left side of my image is going to be lateral or to the patient right. My goal of the image is to produce normal anatomy. So I'm trying to make that bicipital groove as deep as possible. And then the bright ovoid biceps tendon should be well situated in the groove. This is greater tuberosity. I come medial. This is the bicipital groove. Make it as deep as possible. I rise up towards the midline. This is lesser tuberosity as I go off towards the right. This is my short axis view of the biceps tendon. And from the short axis probe tire on the rim view, we're going to go obliquely long axis with our probe placement. So when you read the image from right to left, the landmark is the slope of the greater tuberosity a little downward dip in the cortical margin, which is the anatomic neck of the humerus. And then we see the very prominent round convexity of humeral head. Like this, we're gonna start off in a longitudinal probe placement, suprapatellar. We're gonna first identify the landmarks of the patella and the femur, and then the various interfaces that will uh, be visualized uh, in between. So here we have a very nice uh, long axis, suprapatellar image, left is proximal right is distal. On the right side of the image, very superficial, you can see the cortical margin of the patella with shadowing deep to it. Low and left on the image, the uh, bright hyperechoic margin of the femoral cortex. The interface just above the femoral cortex is a combination of the suprapatellar fat pad and the articularis genu muscle. It's very clear and distinct on this image, the dissecting oblique anechoic line of the suprapatellar pouch or bursa, and then the fibers of the quadriceps tendon attaching to the patella. The knee, I'm sweeping the probe up or anterior looking for bony landmarks, and there we have it. The femoral condyle is on the left, the proximal tibia is on the right. Once I identify those landmarks, I just simply toggle the probe with a great deal of finesse and discretion looking for the triangular homogeneous uh, view of the medial meniscus deep in the joint space. Also, uh, the tendon-like fibers of the medial collateral ligament. I can